Okay, now we're going to learn to play Quantum. Quantum is a wonderful little game in which you play using dice as ships to move around a grid and settle on planets by having exactly the value of that planet and the value of your orbital ship's die, um, the sum of all of them. And orbital ships are not uh, diagonal. They're only these specially bordered orthogonal tiles to the center of the planet. Those are the ones that you use for settling. It has combat where you fight against other players. A combat in this game, the attacker moves into the space of the ship that they wish to attack. Then they roll a die and add the value to the ship that they're using. And then their opponent also rolls a defense die and adds it to the value of the ship they're defending with. Whoever has the lowest total result wins the battle. So a one, like my little one over here, this battleship is incredibly powerful for being able to destroy other player ships. But, here's the drawback. The one can only move one space on the board each turn. Its movement is based on its pit value. A six is a scout ship, and it can fly up to six spaces moving orthogonally around the board. Very mobile, very easy to do things with. So that's what you got looking forward to. Uh, let's see, what else can I say about this before I just get into the ships? Okay, every turn you're going to have three actions. Down here is a turn sequence, little like player aid, helping you to look at what these actions are. You can reconfigure, which is pick up a ship that you have, re-roll it. Re-roll again if you get the same number. It has to become a different number, and it replaces back where it was. That is an action you can take. So if you don't like your ship, or you need it to become more mobile or less mobile, more combat, you can take the gamble of what you roll it on. You can deploy. If a ship is in your scrapyard because it's been destroyed, or you acquired a new ship, the new ship will actually let you deploy as a free action, you can place it into an orbital position around one of the planets you control. It has one of your cubes. You can use an action to move. Attack is a free action with moving, as long as you can move into their space with the amount of movement you have available. After combat, if you are successful, you move into the space or choose to go back to the space you originally came from. You get a little bit of freedom in where you end your attack. If you are repulsed, typically you just move your ship back. You ran in ray and retreated from that combat. Certain cards in the game, and we'll get to cards here in a second, allow an opponent to blow you up if you're unsuccessful, so attacking them becomes uh, riskier. Another thing you can do is construct a cube. This is one of the primary ways early in the game that you get your quantum cubes onto the board. It gives you more uh, planets that you can deploy from, it deprives your opponents of being able to go there as well, but the construct is two actions on the same turn. So you have to basically be able to get in position with a single action or have been in position from a previous turn. Uh, research. You can choose to use one of your actions to up your research die. Your research die is over here on the right and you just keep upping it until you get to six. Once you get to six on your research die, you get a breakthrough and get an advance card. Advanced cards come through either dominance, research, or constructing a cube. Also, you should note when you do dominance, this is where you get a plus one for every enemy ship you destroy, minus one for each of your ships that's destroyed. If you reach six on this die where you've been dominating other people, you get to place a cube anywhere on the board that you would like. So you might place it in a planet far away from your starting position to put these cubes down. Once you have placed all five cubes, you win the game. The number of cubes might change a little bit based on the map and setup you're using. I just used the default map for this one. So that's all you need to know there. Finally, at the end of your turn, if you have placed any cubes or got a research breakthrough, you get an advance card. I'm about to show the advance cards once I do this. Okay, I should do the first phase here so we can show what goes on. You get to check on your starting ships and decide to keep them or re-roll them all. You have to re-roll all of them, though. Well, a 1 and a 6 is enough for me to be able to conquer a 7, and it's not great after that, but that's good enough. I'm going to keep them the way they are. It'll help me show some things. And then... 
Doesn't really matter what my opponent does with his ships. He can do whatever he wants. I told him just to basically pass his turn so that I can show stuff. So now I'm going to deploy my one. The next phase of the game is we choose planets. In a two-player game, you just choose planets as far away from each other as possible. In a four-player game, there might be more options. I'm going to put my one close to a planet. I'm going to put my six far away from a planet. I'm going to put my four in another position. And in my initial placement, and he can do whatever he wants with his ships, kind of the same thing, just getting them onto the board. Great, thanks. Alrighty, now, cards, I can finally talk about them. We deal out three cards to the gambits, three cards to the command cards. These are different decks. Gambits are one-time use cards. You have the ability to take these trying to get an instant advantage in the game. One of the biggest instant advantages in the game is this momentum. Take a bonus to action turn. If you manage to get um, dominance or research to six, something like that, and you now have your ships in position around a planet, you can take momentum for a two action turn, which is enough to construct a cube, get another cube down, and take another card. So it's a great way to just literally get some momentum to your actions or to rush the end of the game where people didn't expect it. Expansion is the most common gambit. It adds an extra ship to your fleet. Instead of having just three dice to work with, you'll have a fourth die to work with. You roll it and put it in position immediately if you choose to. You can keep it in your scrapyard as you want, but it'll take you an action later to deploy it. So typically you'll deploy. The other one that's available right now is Sabotage. Remove a command card from each other player. In a four-player game, this is a really great card if everyone else already has a command card. You get to strip one of the victory things from every other player, and you lost one yourself. But everyone gets set back as long as they already had a command. Particularly good if someone's using their cards to good effect. Now, let's talk about the commands. There are all kinds of cards here. I am definitely not going to go through all of them, just get you the idea. Ravenous, Dominance Amplification. If you destroy a ship, get plus two. When your ship is destroyed, minus two. This is a huge benefit to someone who wants to be a warlike victor and just kill everyone else to get their win. Yes, it ups your risk because of the minus two, but you have to do the same thing anyway of getting a net number of ships destroyed versus lost. I might as well do it faster. Righteous. Your dominance is not reduced when one of your ships is destroyed. Ooh, that's kind of nice. What if you combine these two? So now you get plus two if you win, and you get nothing lost if you lose. There's a big combo right there. Cruel. Anytime you attack or defend, let's say you lost, you were going to lose the combat, you can force your opponent to re-roll one time. Maybe you'll be able to win this time. There's another one that allows you to re-roll if you didn't like the option instead of forcing them to re-roll. They're all just kind of different things to help you manipulate combat. All right, actions. Uh, the only other thing I want to talk about now are ship abilities and then conquer a planet, and that's basically all I want to do for this how to play video. Each ship has a special ability. The number one ship is a battle station. Its ability is strike, attack one enemy next to the battle station, and it does get to move with that attack. So if there was a ship in range, I could move, go in between is where you go to attack. You'll put the dice right against each other and attack that player. Now obviously no one's close enough for me to use that strike. I'm going to move anyway, but that's just for a different reason. Um, the next type of ship is a two. I'm going to be able to show you a two in a minute. I'm going to be able to show you a three in a minute. Four though, this one is a frigate. It has the ability to modify its value up or down one. It can change into a 3, or it can change into a 5. I'm going to show those dice here in a bit, too. I'm going to go straight to the 6, since I have one available. Does it show me his tooltips? No. A 6. This is a scout. It is very good at moving, and it has a free configure. So you can run it all the way across the world, get close to your opponent, and then re-roll it and hope you get a different ship. 
An important thing to know is that your free action for your special ability can only be used once per die, even if the die gets re-rolled by reconfigure or from scout. You can only use that ship special ability once per turn. Now, if a die has not used its special ability, let's say you've moved something and then you used reconfigure to this normal use an action reconfigure to re-roll it and you get a one and you're right next to an opponent, you can immediately use strike because that die has never used a special ability. All right, I'm gonna move this scout over here. Then I am going to research with my extraction and in my action phase. And then I told him just to basically pass turns. All he needs to do so that I can do stuff here. Okay, now it's back to me again. I can construct on this world because I have six plus one in orthogonal orbital positions. I will construct, place one of my quantum cubes onto the planet. In this case, the planet can only hold one. This is a two player setup, so the planets are a little different with multiple players. And then I can take this ship and go run all the way up here. Now the only thing left for me to do is to show you the 2, 3, and 5. So let's see if I can't use my reconfigure free ability to get one of those types of ships. A 3! Yay! Perfect! This is absolutely ideal for me because next turn I'll be able to use this ship ability warp. Swap places with one of your ships located anywhere on the map. This is one of the most effective ways to get a 1 into position next to an enemy, which my 3 has now put me. And then I will be able to strike with that battleship immediately. So, quite cool. I'm glad that I got a 3. Warp. Good way to get your low-cost ships, your 1s and your 2s, into the position you want. Or, just to reposition the 3 into where you want. Maybe the die over here, maybe you used a 5 or a 6 to get somewhere, and then you warp the 3 in because the 3 was what you wanted. Alright, I'm going to end my action phase here. I get to pick a card. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick Momentum. So I get an immediate 2 action turn. Before he can do anything about it, I am going to warp ability with my 1. I have 2 actions left still. I am going to choose to use my ship ability strike and move up here and attack. Now it's going to roll a die. I got a 1 plus 5, he got a 5 plus 2. I got a lower result with 6 than his 7, so I destroy his ship. Now I get to choose to move my ship back to where I came from or into position around his planet. I'm just going to be incredibly aggressive here and move on into his planet. Now the only die left are the 2 and the 5. I'm going to go ahead and use the free ability here to modify this into a 5. A 5 has the ability to... Come on, tooltip. Come up. Move diagonally. This is actually even more movement than the 6, depending upon if you need a straight line. A 6 can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 from this bottom corner, but the 5 can go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, I have already used a special ability this turn, so it's not allowing me to use his special ability until next turn. I was like, why is it not letting me show that I can go all the way here? I'll show that next turn instead. Um, the only thing left for me to do is to try to get a 2, I believe. Yep, 2 is the only thing I haven't shown. Please be a 2. Please be a 2. It's not a 2, but I can go ahead and move it. Since I have not moved this die, I only used the strike action. So I warp my battleship in, I attack with the battleship, I turn it into something else so it can get there, and I attack him. Now you'll notice I had a 6 result, 4 plus 2, and he had a 3 plus 3, so also a 6 result. It favors the attacker in a battle. I want to stay a little further away from his 3 so I don't get blown up instantly. And in fact that was a mistake. 
Undo move choice, please. Good. Let me. Because one of his rerolls, he rerolls the ship immediately, was a battle station. And I don't want him to drop the battle station adjacent to me and get to kill me with a free action. All right. Let's see what he does. Alrighty. He hit six on his research and gets to do whatever he wants and uh, take a card. Okay. He picked whatever that was righteous. He can't lose dominance and replaced it with brilliant. Add two to your research at the start of each turn. So every three turns, you're going to get a command card or a gambit for free. Pretty nice card if you can get it early. Anyway, that's the general idea of Quantum. Please show me a two game. Show me a two. Reconfigure. Be a two. Be a two. Be a two. Nope. Reconfigure. Be a two. Be a two. Be a two. Can I reconfigure that same ship? I guess I've never tried to reroll the same one. Yeah, you can reroll the same one over and over. Alrighty. Just gonna end that and then let him do his thing. I want to show you the tooltip so you can see what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's called a flagship. Um, this is a six, so it gets a free reconfigure. I'm gonna move it over here for a specific reason. And I'm going to use its ship ability to reconfigure itself for free. you got to be careful using that one because you can't stop once you've done it. Reconfigure. Reconfigure again. I will roll a 2 someday. Alrighty. In the action phase. Waiting for him to pass his turn. My turn. Reroll. That is still not a two. Someday I will actually roll a two and be able to finish this video. I'm so sorry this is taking forever. This gets a free reconfigure at least. Wow, this is going great, guys. In the action phase. Another thing I guess I can note about nuances in this game, you can only have three command cards at a time. If you get an additional command card, you must replace one of your current ones. The game ends immediately when someone drops their final cube. There is no ties for turns. Sort of favors the first person just a little bit. Hey, finally got my two. Very good. The flagship has transport. Pick up one surrounding ship from a surrounding space. Surrounding in this case means all eight of the spaces around it, including diagonals. Carry it as you move and drop it in any surrounding space. So if I click to use its ability, oh, I've already used reconfigure this turn, so I'm just gonna research, pass my turn, and next turn, because I use the free ability on the six to get that ship in the first place. Uh-oh, looks like he got bored of just sitting there and decided to blow me up. Actually, I probably should have asked him to do that a while ago because maybe I'd have rolled a 2 on my reconfigure. <laughs> it would be very ironic if that were to have happened right now. Oh, there, he just showed me another thing I completely forgot about. Instead of taking a card, he decided to scrap all six of the cards that were out there and get new ones. 
So now let's show transport. The transport ability allows me to pick up another ship, put it directly on top. Then I move. I mean, I only have a movement of two, but then I get to drop it off. And I can drop it off in any one of the eight surrounding tiles. So I can end up getting something from way back here if I were here, move up and drop it even further using those diagonals to get much further along. Really cool stuff. I'm going to deploy this four because I just realized I never actually showed you that five ability. So I'm going to do one last turn and then I am done with the video. I still have an action. Okay, research, I guess. In the action phase. Wait for him to pass turn. So much research in this game. Okay. Now, that one time I tried to show you the five, it only let me go up to here because one, two, three, four, five. It let me go to here. But this time it's going to let me go all the way out like this. I can even attack from an angle if I want to. It's kind of weird. It's a very, very weird looking move to attack at an angle, but you're totally allowed to because that's what the ship does. Now I'm going to be repulsed because, you know, I don't have a battleship. That is all of the cards, actions, things you need to know, aggression, add two to dominance, another good way to get your uh, cubes down quickly, jump up, rational. You, instead of rolling, you will just decide to lock your value at three, better than the three and a half average. Stubborn, if you're attacked, you destroy your attacker and gain dominance. Good way uh, to go there. And that is Quantum. I hope you enjoy learning to play it and go play some soon. I'm always happy to play this game with anyone that wants to, so just hit me up for an invite. Always, always happy.